So let's start Popo's Bizarre Adventures. So this is a few days ago um, out, out in um, Williamsburg. This is the uh, Brooklyn Queens Expressway. It's underneath of it. It's dead space anyway. This is dead space. This is just urban dead space that's not being properly utilized anyway. So this is the Department of Sen uh, uh, Sanitation uh, accompanied by the NYPD just destroying. Just destroying People who have no homes, their stuff. Yeah, chairs, tables, coolers, tents. They're just destroying their shit. This is just vindictive, vengeful capitalism. That's all this is. And these fucking bootlickers. Look, I like, I like sanitation workers. I like sanitation workers, right? They're, they're a necessary element in this society. You're nothing more than an agent of the state, and you're a fucking bootlicker just like all these other assholes, right? Go fuck yourselves. Absolutely complicit. Class traitors. Definition of class traitors. <clears throat> yeah. This is absolutely god awful. Uh, let's see. Hang on. I think I have... Yeah, I have more. I have more. Let's turn that way down. Making pennies to destroy those that have even less sickening. Yep. Mattresses are so expensive, they just take it like it's worthless. Yep, Crimson. Whether they managed to get a TV here, <laughs> making the best of what they had, and then shit happens. Yep. Weasel. Blue lives murder. Yeah, they do. Fuck all these people. Fuck all these people right here. Just fuck all of them. Uh, by the way, um, <clears throat> so you guys know, while they were doing this, the actual real feel temperature, the actual ambient temperature for how a person perceives it was approximately 10 degrees. This shit ain't in Las Vegas, right? This shit isn't in Southern California. This isn't fucking Williamsburg. This is in Brooklyn, New York, right? When they're doing this, this is 10 degrees. That's kill people temperatures. 100% carpe. 100%. Born a cop. I was born a cop. I'm... <laughs> Oh, they shoved them off to the side, Cassie. They're all, like, you can see them in one of the shots. They're off on the edge. They've basically moved them. <laughs> Viva. Our public defender system is so backed up. It's, it's essentially non-functioning at this point. Our public defender system is so broken. Regular people that decide to get up and kill, or, or hurt, or rob and steal. It's not the homeless that do that. Preach. Yeah. Those are regular people that decide to get up and kill, or, or hurt, or rob and steal. It's not the homeless that do that, or it's not only the homeless. Like you're kicking us while we're already down. It's a nightmare. I've been in numerous shelter systems. It's like there's people bidding. It's like like they're in prison. You know, you got people trying to claim stuff and people like, yo, you can't walk through here. Like, bro, are you serious? Like, we're not in jail, bro. bro. <laughs> Carpet. Anyone who thinks policing is a life is 100.9% white supremacist. <laughs> um, played by society said, I've had homeless friends who died because of stupid shit like this. I am. I am Tony Hawk. Although he's never really had a cocaine problem, so... Um, and by the way, I'm not as skinny as you may think I am. Um, but welcome. And I always appreciate a Tony Hawk reference. So yeah, that's what was going on a couple of days ago. Um, in Williamsburg, they were condemning a bunch of homeless people to die by, um, <laughs> die by, uh, exposure. Yeah. So, you know, as you do, as you do, um, 
That's one of the good ones. So we'll we'll wrap up on that one. Um, Argentinians. I like them. I like Argentina. Um, so the cop gets to rob and kill with slack to save a lifetimes, uh, uh, to save lifetimes. Um, yes. Yeah, it is a thing. Okay. So let's start talking about your right to film police because I hate to break it to you. And, and for those of you who know what I mean by when I say, I hate to break it to you. Um, I hate to break it to you, but your right to film police is like sincerely under attack. Like in a multi-state, multi-faceted direction. Um, Arizona has just passed uh, legislation to essentially make it illegal to film police within, what is it, 12, 15, 8 feet? There's some weird variance. It has to be like 15 feet and then they can close the gap and then they can like trunch in you in the kidney or some shit like that. Um, Arizona has passed it. Um, Indiana uh, has, uh, Gary, Indiana has been after it for ages, but Indiana's going after it um the first third fifth seventh ninth and 11th u.s district courts of appeals have all upheld filming the police's constitutionally protected like expression but that doesn't prevent these fucking bootlicking thugs to do what they do um so the supreme court when given the first opportunity to rule on this in 2021 in fraser v evans um they declined to hear it 45 organizations, including the Reporters Committee for Freedom of the Press, uh, petitioned the judge, uh, justices to weigh in on it. Again, they refused to weigh in on it, which means we do not have like the proper verdict we need on this, which means there's room for states to do this kind of manipulation bullshit. Um, the the Fraser uh, Fraser v Evans was uh, Levi Fraser. He recorded cops battering a suspect um, and pushing a pregnant woman to the ground. And when the cops caught Fraser documenting the encounter, they confiscated his tablet and deleted the video. And he fucking took him to court. And well, it made it all the way to the Supreme Court, but the Supreme Court declined to hear it, and so we're fucked there. So now. Fucking like literally uh, uh, Arizona just passed theirs. Oklahoma has an anti-doxing law that prevents rele uh, uh, an officer's personal information, which, by the way, could include video of their badge number, any patrol car license plates and any any other identifiable information from being released to the public. So if you YouTube stream some fucking cop shooting a motherfucker on the ground screaming, fuck you, N word, fuck you, N word, die die, 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 you're still liable in Oklahoma for that shit. You're going to jail because you filmed an uh, identifiable information and released it to the public about that officer. You're still going to end up going to, uh, going to jail. Florida, Florida has an anti-riot law that includes a clause about cyber intimidation by publication is a it's a punishable offense for anybody who publishes an officer's information online with quote the intent of harassing them which i mean that's not open to massive interpretation um i i can only imagine what that's fucking what that's about like literally the dude who authored the oklahoma bill said if you're videotaping at all you don't need a badge number right like if you're filming something at the time of the incident a department is going to know what officer is involved uh, with that not a problem and if, especially if you capture the officer's face there's no reason to get up close to a vehicle or to the officer it's never required right like straight up it, like these these motherfuckers are all on this one um, there's a couple of different federal lawsuits going on. Like the ACLU's got one going um, fucking uh, with a dude who was arrested last year for uh, filming the officers who were they, the plain closed officers who were uh, who beat and pepper sprayed a man like they recorded this arrest. And then fucking they uh, they gave him a summons for recording them, like just beating some random subway goer and pepper spraying him. And so the ACLU's on that case, at least that one's going up for a federal, uh, uh, that one's a federal trial for, uh, first amendment infringements. But the fact of the matter is, is that this shit still, it keeps happening. Um, I tech, 
uh, one of the few instances where you should upload video to cloud services is cupcake. Yeah. hundred percent. Um, fucking beast. I'm sure the Supreme court will squash all this since it's literally the purpose of their, <laughs> oh, wait, this is American. Never mind. Um, yeah, no, this is, this is legitimately your right to, um, uh, to film. The police is straight up under attack. Like that's just no way around that. Um, so, in other news, did you know that ICE has fake colleges where they take people's money and actually have them come to, like, classes to earn credits? All to like they get re they receive permission to work full time that they're like here on like a st a student visa and it's all fake. It's all fake. It's literally entrapment. It's it's literally entrapment. There's 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 no way around this. Um, yes, yes. Yes. I don't know why I'm being distracted from the fucking Popo's Bizarre Adventure segment for some fucking Argentinian to need to know that I am aggressively gay, but apparently we're taking a, we're taking a second away from Popo's Bizarre Adventures for some fucking Argentinian to be informed that I'm gay. Yes. I don't know why that's necessary to this conversation, though, to be perfectly honest. Um... I don't know how that relates to vice uh, to ice setting up literal fake colleges and entrapping people in them like immigrants inviting immigrants over getting them to pay for tuition and then entrapping them in pay to stay schemes that they themselves create and then sending them to fucking jail and then deporting them. Right? Like, that's actually a fucking thing. Dude from China, a woman from Turkey. This isn't just, like, Hispanics. You're like, oh, it's fucking, like, Mexican border crossers. No, they're, like, inviting people. They, these are real fake fucking schools they have set up. And they come and they do class. Like, they think they're working towards credits and shit. And the meanwhile, they're being ensnared in this, like, federal sting operation. They have no fucking clue about what's going on. But yeah, no, the, the ICE actually has full-on fake schools set up where they invite, they, they literally have like fake programs and brochures and like counselors that, that will talk to fucking some Turkish woman and say, oh yes, we can arrange for you to get work over here and you can ex all this sort of shit, right? And they end up fucking doing time. It's, it's literally, it's designed to take advantage of the, um, the want, the desire, the drive, right? We're, we're, they're trading on the brand of American university education. The American education is one of the best you could get in the world if you can only get it, right? If you can get access to it, it's one of the best educations in the world to get, get your hands on. So they set up fake, fake schools, fake companies, fake visa programs all to entrap people who are seeking legitimate entry into this country and they falsify the program. These people think they're participating in legitimate programs. Only it's a fake program set up by our own federal government. And somehow that counts as a crime. Dude, wither? Honestly, I'm not entirely sure how, because these things have been described literally, quote, as an elaborate deception. Yes, they're encouraging immigration to catch immigrants, caboose. Straight up. Is the craziest shit. Um, like, here, hold on. I have, here, I have, I have, I have swag. This is a this is a t-shirt for the University of Northern New Jersey. Okay? 
they had UNN, uh, UNN, uh, UNNJ.edu set up. Literally a whole website talking about how high quality American education to students from around the world, quote, this education is based on a foundation of intense academics and real world business experiences set in beautiful Cranford, New Jersey and the surrounding New Jersey and New York City areas. Social media accounts were associated with this. The only thing lacking appears to be reference to UNNJ's men's or women's basketball team in the final four of the National Collegiate Athletic Association's basketball tournament, a U.S. appeals court said. Literally, the only reference that any other university would have would be the fact that the NCAA didn't reference this school. Every other single identifier that you would look for in a school or university as to count it as legitimate had been backstopped for this school. How the fuck do you tell the difference? Um, as early as 2016 with her, maybe earlier. We don't know entirely. We don't know entirely. But 2016 looks to be like... According to the court case, Swede, literally, like, hang on, hang on. I'll give you the, the direct quote. The U.S. appeals court that heard this case said, quote, the only thing lacking appears to be a reference to this school's uh, men's or women's basketball team in the NAACP, uh, the NCAA, NAACP, the NCAA. That's, that's a U.S. appeals court's opinion. Okay, so the appeals court heard this case and said, as near as we can tell, the only thing missing was the NCAA. And I'm guessing they took into account accreditation. That seems to be the sort of thing that an appeals court, a U.S. appeals court would probably check on. So, yeah. A, a lot of this shit is gone now, by the way. They scrubbed a lot of this shit. Like, the social media accounts are gone, the website's gone. Like, do, do they scrubbed a lot of this shit. Like, government program, federal program, right? <sighs> Out the window. Just, <sighs> you know, smoke and mirrors, man, smoke and mirrors. But yeah, according to the U.S. Appeals Court ruling, the only thing lacking, that is their own term, those their specific words, the only thing lacking appears to be a reference to their uh, men's or women's back basketball team by the NCAA. Screwing like the rats they are, Sicarpe. Yeah, basically. So. Oh, yes. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, Swede. Swede, 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 Swede. Yes, I have. They had accreditation. They had accreditation. Yep. Uh, up to and including DHS even listed the schools as approved institutions. But yes, they had accreditation as well. Yep, they had accreditation. DHS listed it as an approved institution. Foreign students who contacted the State Department found that it was valid. Yeah, no, it's, it's literally down the list. It was a fake fucking school. Didn't scrub hard enough. No, they never do. The Internet Archive is a bitch. Hey, they have graduate studies. I want to get a master's in computer science. What y'all got? Oh, it's choked up there. Um... Graduate computer programs, uh, computer science program. What we got? Um, Master of Science compu uh, program in computer sciences builds upon the undergraduate knowledge and theoretical principles and programming underlying c uh, computer science in combination with field specific elective courses such as algorithmic and data structure. Mm. Uh. They make no such claim. I'm not seeing those init that initialism. But they are saying that you could end up as a stockbroker or a hedge fund manager, and I know that requires, like, certain things, Swede. Like, I know that's specific. Like, there's, there's shit. Investment banker, financial advisor, stockbroker, hedge fund manager. I know that's, that has, like, a whole bunch of requirements attached to it to be able to work in that arena. 
So they're at least making claims, whether they're implied claims or explicit claims can be discussed, but they're making claims just by putting those fields there, are they not? Viva, damn, I should try that. Uh, well, ICE is a part of DHS. Yeah, Carpe. <laughs> Whether I'm enraged. How do you spell Nazi? D-H-S. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, Sweet. Do you think that a, a, an immigrant, like a, some, some woman off the streets of Turkey who has been told literally by the United States government that this is an accredited school would know that? I know. Buyer beware. Caveat emptor. I get it. But you realize you're not, dude, you, you went to fuck, you went to Creighton, my man. You went to Creighton, right? Like, do you understand that, like, most people don't know this shit? You get that, right? Like, you're, you're in an elite class. Most people don't know this shit. <laughs> like, dude, they were being told by everybody that this shit was real. They were told by everybody. The state of New Jersey said it was accredited. DHS says it was accredited. The fucking United States Department of Education said it was, said it was accredited. Like, fucking, cat, just, just, it's bougie-ass fucking college. Just know that. <laughs> it's about bougie-ass fucking, it's, it's a quality college. It's a quality education. Let's just put it that way. Um, not just bougie, but good, right? Yeah. Like, it's a real credential to have Creighton on your fucking academic resume. It really is, and Swede knows it. Like, dude, everybody fucking told them that school was real. <laughs> everybody. <laughs> like, everybody you could turn to and ask um, fucking said, yeah, it's real. It's accredited. The state of New Jersey says it's accredited. The federal government says it's accredited. The fucking academic organizations say it's accredited. Like, everybody was on board with this scam. Dude, ICE is out there setting up fake fucking schools. And somehow this is illegal? Like, they're, they're, this is literal entrapment. This is literal entrapment. They are enticing people to commit a crime that wouldn't have otherwise existed without them. They created the crime. They literally, it's, it wouldn't have existed without them. They created a fake fucking school. We don't have total numbers, um, but is Swede, just this one school, the court case that is hearing this has a thousand foreign nationals involved in it. Fraudulently obtaining student visas for 1,000 foreign nationals in exchange for tuition or kickbacks. It's kickbacks. Yeah, 1,000. They did this 1,000 times with this one that we know about. You know they did this more than once. You know they did this more than once. You know they did this more than once. There's no fucking way. There's no fucking way. Yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, the feds paid people to run it. They didn't just run it themselves. They paid people. Brokers were given commissions to recruit. Brokers were given commissions to recruit. That's part of the lawsuit. It's part of the lawsuit. Yeah. The feds were paying motherfuckers like some used car salesman type motherfuckers to recruit. Yeah, that's, dude. That's some sketchy ass shit. That's some sketchy ass shit. So, yeah. Um, brokers were scamming them on the front. Fucking undercover agents were posing as university officials. Right? Like, straight up. It, it is... Oh, uh, by the way, <clears throat> all of the brokers who were charged with fraud as a, as a knock-on effect, um, they all pled guilty. They all pleaded guilty. Um, none. 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 Received any punishment worse than probation. And less than half of them received any punishment whatsoever. Okay? Probation was the worst 
that had occurred for any of the brokers that the government hired. Oh, okay, so what do we got? We got some others. Reagan, Univer Reagan National University and the University of Farmington, two others. Yeah, so at least three times that we know of. There's some sketchy ass shit. <laughs> some fucking sketchy ass shit. <laughs> um, the government agreed in this case to admit wrongdoing. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> fucking. <laughs> they agreed to pay four hundred and fifty thousand dollars and admit no wrongdoing. That's 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 how that worked out. Um, that's that's yeah, fucking yeah. We'll cut you a check for four hundred and fifty thousand dollars across like a thousand defendants. Okay, a thousand defendants. They'll cut you a check for four hundred and fifty thousand dollars and admit no wrongdoing whatsoever. Try better bait. I don't. I don't bite at bait like that. You need to try better to uh, troll. Um, try something f like not from the remedial class. Anyway. So, yeah, like boring, my man, boring. So, so back to Brooklyn. You know, we were talking about Brooklyn earlier about, you know, the shithead stuff that they were doing with the uh, homeless encampments. Um, fucking. They, um, Brooklyn, uh, the, the, um, Brooklyn is going to partner with um, Blue White Robotics and easy aerial. So, you know, <clears throat> uh, blue white Ro robotics is a, uh, drone, a, a company out of Israel. Essentially what they're looking to do is, well, here, The IDF and Border Patrol already uses, um, ha they have contracts for this sort of thing. So they're calling this the Soteria Project uh, from a Greek word meaning uh, deliverance from a crisis. The goal is to, quote, put an eye in the sky in zero time to enhance security across all of New York. So they want to put drones in the sky 24 hours a day, seven days a week with a near as, to as complete coverage as they can get in Brooklyn, starting in Brooklyn. They're going to, what they're using is um, the rise in anti-Semitic hate crimes to justify this program, hence the Israeli partner who's doing the drone work. Uh -huh. um, so these are automated drones. These are not flown drones. So, you know, um, these are literally, it, this is an automated program. Um, there will be no one need to come fly the drone. They will take off by themselves. They will fly the entire mission themselves. They will come back on their own accord and recharge themselves in portable charging locations. It's essentially a police Roomba for the sky. Um, yes. Boom. No. In residential areas. Yes. Drones in the sky and robot dogs on the ground left. Exactly. Um, Beast calling it in five years, they'll be armed with less than lethal weaponry. Do I be surprised if it's five years even? Um, so yeah, it uses, um, so what if I use my drone to shoot down drones over uh, my property? You will be in violation of all sorts of stuff. Um, so here's, um, here's the deal. Um, they, they use an automated um, series of uh, object identification algorithms. They can identify people, cars, various objects on the ground, such as a bag left on the street corner. Um, so it can flag things automatically for somebody at a terminal to watch, a guard, a police officer, whoever, fucking whatever authoritarian jackbooted thug whose job it is to maintain the status quo of our society. 
um, is going to be employed to do this. Either way, uh, yes, um, they these 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 drones would be just an automated fleet constantly gathering and doing object recognition within Brooklyn and then probably New York and then probably elsewhere um, if it's successful. So, yes. This 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 has been this has been um, <clears throat> cited as a win win uh, for Williamsburg um, because quote for the city because it's a win win for the city because Israel brings out the best in both places we bring technology from Israel and we create jobs here in New York New Yorkers can benefit from that technology either from safety or medicine or agriculture and many other avenues of course they won't. Of course, they won't be flying over the billionaires' houses. Uh, on what connections? They're maintaining it's secure, but I'm maintaining that you'll be able to knock it out of the sky with a fucking Pringles can antenna. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I think you can... I think you could... I think you could um I think you could probably trick a, a return home command because they probably have like a if I've lost signal return to last GPS location sort of command um built in there's probably a fail safe you could probably trick that you could probably trick that yeah you could do enough signal blanketing to cause it to lose its connection temporarily and return home Bobby, uh, they do have that. Almost all modern drones do. Yeah, so you just you just fucking blanket it signal and call it a day. Hey, caboose. <laughs> fucking, yeah. Jesus Christ. Um, oh, it won't be a North Korean hacker that hijacks the system. It'll be us right out of the gate. It'll be us. Um... So there you go. That's that's what's that's again back to fucking dude. Brooklyn's making the headlines, and it's not a good thing. Wonder if they're five G. <laughs> um, fucking, oh. we'll see. Um, so I don't know what order I want to do these in. Hold on. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's bounce around the coast for a little bit. <laughs> Or just throw pickled veggies at it like the Ukrainian grandmas. <laughs> uh, fucking A. So, <clears throat> for those of you who are unaware, this will, be, this will not be news for the likes of Cat and Beast, um, but for those of you who are unaware, the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department has a bit of a gang problem. And by a bit of a gang problem, I don't mean that there's gangs running rampant on the streets, though they are. Um, it's not the gangs you think. There are at least, according to, well, multiple civilian oversight committees, there are at least 18 gangs in the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. Now, you're thinking to yourself, oh my God, the Bloods and the Crips and MS-13 has infiltrated the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. No, Pookie. No, no, that's not what this is about. These are their own gangs. These are gangs that they have. Gangs like, you know, by the names of like the Executioners. Things like that. <laughs> Um, they also have the banditos. They have the banditos and they have the executioners. Uh, and they tattoo themselves. They like to brand themselves. Um, let me get you some examples. Here's one. This is one of the executioner's ta uh, tattoo.
Kaiser. I, I sure hope they do. Uh, I sure hope they do. Yes. They have at least 18 gangs in the sheriff's department. Um, so a inspector general has launched an investigate an internal investigation. They compete for kills, likely. Yeah, uh, Carpe, from what I understand, that's gang entry. That's part of the jump in. You don't you don't get in the executioner's gang without doing some shit. You gotta earn your stripes. So yes, an inspector general uh, investigation has been launched into the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department itself, seeing as we've yet to figure this out. They're saying that the investigation w it will take approximately a half a year. The commission is has aims to determine which stations the gangs operate out of, as well as the scope and impact the groups have had on the communities that deputies are, you know, supposedly. Uh, uh, commission to protect. I mean, that's, you know, <laughs> um, whether we got so much more to do, fuck it. You're not even like close. Um, so yeah. Um, it is, we have seen multiple iterations of this, uh, in the past, um, for sure. Uh, not why, uh, not sh not surprised why American police is so crazy. Uh, well, if you want to find out more, you can go to my YouTube channel, and though it's not, <laughs> people don't go there. Uh, YouTube channel and watch uh, the origins of and problems with modern policing, or you could read the essay on my website, and you can explore why our police are absolutely fucked for yourself. Um, Fucking Zerum, I don't need I don't need the Gravel Institute to fuck it. Okay, one, I don't trust the Gravel Institute. I don't like or trust the Gravel Institute. And two, I've done my own fucking stuff on this. So I don't want their material. Um, but yes, uh, thank you either way. Um, so yes, the um the the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department is under investigation for housing a minimum 18 gangs within their department structure, right? The um uh the uh uh fucking um the one of the commissions that has looked into this has found that um at minimum they managed to discover at least 41 deputies that have been uh, identified as tattooed members of two of the gangs alone right so just a civilian commission alone looking into this has found 41 uh 41 ga uh gang members slash same thing right sheriffs uh, sheriff's deputies in the Los Angeles County sheriffs just belonging to two of the 18 gangs Right? Imagine how many there are. There's hundreds. There's hundreds. There's hundreds of Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department gangbangers. Uh, those were active, Cassidy. Those were active. I can't speak to retired. Dude, they haven't even looked at retired. Dude, the, the commission wasn't even looking at retired, I don't think. Because who gives a shit about the retired ones, right? Like, that's, they were trying to figure out who's on the street right now. Yeah, those were active, active duty sheriffs. They're gangbangers, male rights. They're gangbangers. Like, literal actual gangbangers with with gangs called like the executioners where you have to do some shit you have to spill blood to gain entry to get the, your tattoo so you can get branded as an executioner get your shit together man yeah i'm not on the side of fucking gangbangers and in police uniforms literally shooting people to get entry into the gang oh bleeding heart liberal Oh, whatever shall I do? I don't want murderous cops running around in f fucking executing people. What a fucking lib I must be. Get your fucking shit straight, man. Jesus, goddamn Christ. Or apparently you're a big fan of street gangs. So you know what? I'll get you a one-way ticket to Ecuador and you can go hang out with MS-13 since you're a big fan of fucking street gangs now. I had no idea Mail Rights USA is such a big fan of street gangs. Violent murderous street gangs 
So I'll get you a ticket. Don't worry about it. It's on me. It's on me. We'll get you a fucking street ticket down to Ecuador and you can hang out with the MS-13 uh, gangbangers. I'm sure you'll love it. After all, you're not a bleeding heart lib. You'll fit, ri- you'll fit right in. I'll bite this bullet, said Beast. The Bloods and Crips did a better job than the LAPD. Um, yeah, don't you understand? Don't you understand? The police is the first and only legalized gang. Um, I would not be surprised to hear politicians form gangs also. Wait, isn't that called party? It is. Uh, fucking cat. Okay, but let, let's relax. The Bloods and Crips, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, good job. Anyway, moving on. Uh, let's jump over to, dude, Cassidy, forgive me. I'm about to butcher your fucking par- your county's, like, it's a parish. It's a county. Louisiana, catch up. Fucking Louisiana needs to catch up. Well, we have parishes. You have counties. Get with the fucking program. Weird Catholic shit left over. Uh, so, I'm going to butcher this parish's name. I don't know. Calcaso, Cal- Calso, I don't fucking know. C A L C A S I E U, right? Calcaso, whatever. Um, Calcasu, Calcasu. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you for the phonetic, Bobby. Bobby hooking it up. Calcasu par- uh, Parish Sheriff's Office. Um, fucking. <sighs> They literally arrested him in the wrong state. This motherfucker, they calcified? Yes, Carpe, calcified. Um, The sheriff's office issued an incorrect warrant. Right? They issued an incorrect warrant, misidentified a suspect... Ends up a Florida dude gets mistakenly identified in a contractor fraud case and arrested in Broward County, Florida, because Broward County is a bunch of jackbooted thugs. They don't fuck around. You got an active warrant. Broward Broward is like Pasco. Dude, they don't fuck around. And they fucking reel this motherfucker in. Wrongfully arrested in his home in the state of Florida. For a crime in southwest Louisiana, because the Louisiana uh, Sheriff's Department is so goddamn stupid that they issued a warrant just for some random dude, basically. Fucking, um, yeah. Fucking Florida deputies run this this dude's fucking license plate at random. <clears throat> they fucking, um, his last name is Estevez. So Florida Broward maintains they ran his plates randomly. Sure they did. And they found that there was an extradition order for him out of Louisiana. So they fucking nab him. And well, you know, the original uh, uh, officer um, fucking basically... Put in all the wrong information. It, they don't, I mean, straight up. They just put in the wrong info. I, I I don't even begin to wrap my head around how badly you fuck up like this. Like how you fuck up this badly. But, yeah. They put in some other dude's information into their fucking warrant system. They put a bolo out on this motherfucker. And he had an extradition order. And then uh, Broward County's racist fucking sheriffs saw a brown man driving down the street, so they ran his license plate, and they found that, ooh, we're lucky today. He's got a fucking warrant. He's got an extradition order for Louisiana, so they fucking nabbed this motherfucker. And sure enough, and of course, this is great, because you know one of my favorite parts is the apology, right? My favorite part is the public statement from the fucking idiot cops. Here's the sheriff department. Here's the sheriff himself. The cops main job is killing and kidnapping. No, no, no. Okay, kidnapping and killing. I think killing comes secondary. Kidnapping comes primary. I think it's kidnapping and killing. But either way, I agree with you with her. It's just, you know, order of operations. That's all. Um, 
Do they kill more or do they kidnap more? I think they kidnap more. So we have to say their main job is kidnapping and killing. And some of those they kidnap, they kill. And actually some they kill, they kidnap too. They're weird like that. Anyway, here's um fucking oh good luck with that boom. Um here's the sheriff's apology because that's that's my favorite part of these. Although I know an apology will not fix this issue. I am sincerely sorry this happened to uh, Ricky Estevez. Um, Sheriff Tony Mancuso said, He was arrested for a crime in Louisiana in which he had no part of. Once we learned this occurred, we made every effort to get him out of jail as quickly as possible. Took him a while, is what he's saying there. A mistake like this should not happen. We are professionals. And it is our responsibility to do our due diligence to check and make sure this type of information is correct prior to issuing a warrant. We're looking at this internally to see how this mistake was made and what changes need to take place to ensure this does not occur again. So look forward to this, um, this headline being back in the news in a year when they do it again. You're including the dog deaths? Oh, well, in that case, yeah, no, fucking... Yeah, wither then. Yeah, definitely killing and kidnapping. 100%. Yeah, if we're, ki- if we're counting dogs, yeah, it's killing kidnapping probably. I can get behind that then. <clears throat> my lesson to my kids about apologies was this. Hey, that kid broke your toy. They said they were sorry. Did that fix your toy? So sweet. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's definitely... <laughs> And Marxism rise up. Thanks for the follow. Pretty sure I want to pay attention to this though. Hold on. Okay, so let's wait. Let's wait. Let's wait. Let's wait. Let's wait. Let's wait. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so I got rid of the the second follow up fucking message uh, sound. God, that thing was irritating the fuck out of me for a while. All right. Fucking. So, uh, we did the gangs. We did uh, Calcasieu. Try and remember that pronunciation for when I have to pronounce it here in a year when they wrongfully arrest another Mexican dude. Uh, oh, it, boom. It was actually the fact that Streamlabs refuses to deintegrate with my fucking Twitch stream. I had to, I had to tear that shit out of there. Um, they absolutely refused. Um, so, do I have... Um, oh, that's just some shit. I want, give me a second, give me a second, give me a second, give me a second. Okay, there we go. Um, and let's pause it oh, for fuck's sake. All right, there we go. So, is that that great? Great story. Uh, we're staying in Louisiana. Louisiana's had a bang up a uh, week and a half here. Um, so Bastrop, Louisiana. Dude, these places are like three people big, aren't they? Like Calcasieu Cal- and Bastrop. You know the high hyper- level of hyperbole I'm using, Cassie and Bobby, right? Like these, this is, these are bumfuck nowhere places, aren't they? Um, so Bastrop, Louisiana. Um, Patrice D... I don't know. Um, Ukeju? Ukeju? Uh, Calcasieu is about 125 for a county. Bastrop is probably 20,000. Jesus Christ, these places are nothing. Um, so, Patrice D., I think Ukeju probably is the pronunciation, but U K E J U. Um, a woman by the name of, uh, by the name, the woman of the age of 58. Um, is suffered what has been described as a brutal arrest uh, this month. A video was posted to Facebook 
Well, we um, I think this has been blurred. Let me let me check it. Yes, it has. Okay, this has been blurred. Uh, I can I can air it. Um. So this is a fifty eight year old a uh, fifty eight year old woman. Now, what you can't see due to the news blurring here, which is necessary for Twitch, fuck you, Twitch, just as a as a as an off here, um, is that she is being dragged down the street by the Bastrop police officer by the arms while being dragged, her pants and underwear are scrunched down to her ankles. So they are just dragging her by her arms, bare-assed over the pavement, all the way down the street, which you see the final portion here, as they drag her to the fucking police car. Bastropville is Redneckville, USA, even for Louisiana. Yeah, sounds about right. Um, she was being arrested for resisting an officer and trespassing. The arresting officer is a captain in the police. Pigs be salty. The, the arresting officer is not some deputy bullshit. That's a captain we're looking at. Yes. So Captain Gerald Givens, who has been identified by the Bastrop police chief. So again, we're not doxing anybody. The police chief himself identified this officer. It is a captain in their police force. This captain drug this 58 year old woman whose only charge was probably being on a sidewalk and telling this cop to go fuck himself, knowing that resisting arrest is one of the primary charge and trespassing. Right? So, but yeah, Captain KKK probably dragged plenty in his lifetime. He seems fucking really good at it. I mean, he's dragging her like it's nothing. Look at this shit. I don't think... Oh, there we go. There we go. How dare you say no to me, pigs, unironically unaware of the rape illusions. Fucking, I mean, he's not even leaning into that. Like, he's dragging her pretty effectively. So, you know, Louisiana having a bang up, uh, a, just a banger week of police abuses and arresting the wrong people and issuing warrants for people who don't even aren't even involved in crimes and dragging nearest makes no difference. 60 year old women by their arms, which, you know, is great for the rotator cuff. For those of you who don't know, um, fucking, Oh, carpe. Yeah, I know. Right. Um, uh, for those that don't know, there's two, two ways you tear your rotator cuff. Um, for those who don't know what a rotator cuff is, but you've heard it, it's essentially the muscles that uh, keep that allow the shoulder to do this and sort of keep it in place intact in its socket. There's two ways to tear your rotator cuff. The majority of people actually age into minor rotator cuff tears. Um, rotator cuff, cuff tears become super prevalent is the older you get. And then there's athletic traumatic injuries. You fall, that sort of thing, and you brace it, and it tears your rotator cuff, right? Um, so if you take a 60-year-old, and you extend their arm like that, and then you yank it as well, you are almost guaranteed to shred somebody's rotator cuff at that point. Um, so chances are that woman is looking at like surgical repair shoulder in injuries, just, just right out of the gate. Uh, there's also a third way involving genetics. Well, I mean, there's a third way fucking, hey, Theo, Bobby, there's always, like, I don't even count genetic reasons for shit like that because the fact of the matter is, is your genetics could fuck anything up. Your entire body can go wrong and genetics can be the underpinning, but that's always a constant. But the majority, the, the ways that people fuck up their, their rotator cuff is um, fucking, it's going. Early onset arthritis. I mean, dude, fucking, it's going, Thea. We're just doing Popo's Bizarre Adventures, so lots of malfeasance of police. Um, we're about halfway through. We're about halfway through. Um, 
back in your car. Hope, hope, hope. Nope. Um, so this one happened a little while ago, and this I just wanted to give an example to, uh, of, oh, hey, we have another. Oh, no, no, no. We, we have that one. Okay. Um, so, yeah, before we leave Louisiana, let's just talk about um, how Louisiana is effectively trying to kill protesting. Uh, the state of Louisiana's Supreme Court has rendered has ruled a decision that protest organizers can be held personally liable for actions of anyone who attends their event. So they, um, when was this? This was Friday. So it would have been last Friday, I think. So this is only a few days old. Um, six of the uh, six of the seven uh, court justices agreed that um, an unnamed police officer injured to a, during a 2016 um, protest in Baton Rouge has the legal grounds to pursue a suit against a guy by the name of D. Ray McKesson, um, who organized the Black Lives Matter movement uh, protest. Um, it, during uh, during the whole Ferguson uh, uh, fucking, you know, how shall we describe it? Series of protests and activities uh, uh, throughout the country and the globe. But it is it is stated that since McKesson was aware he had he had prior knowledge that protests could turn violent, and chose to stage a protest in direct contravention of law. Which again, which law? Um, thereby provoking the police to respond. This is this is the the ruling. A person can easily associate the injury to the police officer with the alleged conduct. The major court's majority ruled, asserting McKesson's role as the high profile instigator and amplifier for said 2016 protest. So, yeah, um, that's. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, Wayne. Yeah. Dude. Rotator cuff is rough. Um, you bled on my shirt. That's assault. Yep. You, I fucking, you hurt my knuckles. That's assault. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it is the Louisiana is attempting to effectively backdoor outlaw protesting by making protesters legally liable for any actions of anyone, any organizer liable for the actions of anyone at their protest, which this doesn't have agent provocateur written all over it, right? Holy shit. If I organize a protest in Louisiana, all I need to uh, all the the cops need to do is get one infiltrator, one agent provocateur in the door and instigate some shit, burn some shit, knock in some windows, do what whatever they do, and they've been caught doing it plenty of times. Don't fucking at me on this one. Fucking the police have been caught so many goddamn times acting as agent provocateurs dating back into time in memoriam in this country basically. But for fucking recent, as recent as the BLM protests and as far back as fucking, you know, early protesting in this country. Night, Weasel. Um, so Louisiana is effectively making it possible to shut down essentially hammer. Yes, hammer guy, fucking carpet, hammer guy. Yeah, one of the more recent ones. Um. Louisiana is making it effectively possible to just shut down all protests by making any organizer legally liable for any actions taken by anybody at that protest, whether they are there in good faith or not. Um, so there you go. Police, uh, Theo said the police system in America scares me like crazy. It should. They should, uh, they should, oh no. No, no. Yeah, they should get paid four times more. Dude, Theo, you realize like a police captain in um in Las Vegas makes like $145,000, $155,000 a year, right? Should a police captain in Las Vegas get paid like a half a million dollars a year? Forget the rest of it. Forget the vetting and shit. The officers are making 85 to 100 here. They're already getting paid, dude. This isn't some yeah, yeah, public. Yeah, I thought that a bit till I saw the salaries. Dude, they're getting paid here. Two years, you get six figures. Yeah. Dude, they're getting paid. This is not some low-level fucking position in this country. Cops make bank here. Yeah, again, this is fucking foreigners and outsiders' perspectives, guys. Like, yeah, no, cops are already making bank here. They're super paid. Dude, our police budgets are in the billions per city. 
Like they they already make bank. This isn't that they're like this isn't the school teacher syndrome. I know you think it's the school teacher syndrome that we're paying our school teachers twenty two thousand dollars a year. So of course you get bottom of the barrel. No, no, we select for this. We select for this. Theo origins of and modern uh, uh, origins of and problems with modern policing. Uh, let me get you a link. Hold on. Let me try and find this fucking link for you. Um, you need to watch it, my man. Trust me, you need to watch it. Uh, it'll be a one-off, right? It'll be a one-off. Nope. It's going to be... What the f... It should be under one-offs, but... Okay, hold on. Has that not gone up? What the fuck happened to my, like, origins? Did I never upload it? Because I know we read it. We fucking did a segment on it. Oh, I never uploaded it. Um, I'll get you that. I'll get that uploaded. Um, Theo, I can, I, I can, um, I can give you the, on my website, kaisthings.com under writing. Um, fucking, yeah. Oh, no, it's a whole thing. It's a whole fucking thing in this country. You, like, I tell the, I tell the entire story from like over in Britain to here, right? Like it's a problem. It's a problem. So yeah, in Louisiana, they're effectively making protesting illegal. Just, just a heads up, just a heads up. Um, so moving around, moving around a bit. Um, I wanted you guys, do you guys remember that stupid fucking YouTuber who um, organized the car jump thing and the dude launched the Tesla and it slammed into some dude's Subaru. Um, it was a fucking, it was making the viral rounds, I don't know, two weeks ago, something like that. Uh, it's like some 21 year old, fucking cat knows this douchebag's name. Um, but he's some LA YouTuber. Car accident, of course I do. <laughs> um, beast, oh yeah, saw that vid, dumbass. All right, so the Subaru guy, the Subaru guy had a really interesting story to tell, actually. Um, fucking, the guy's name is Hook, last name of Hook, right? The guy who owned the car that the fucking Tesla slammed into that they all bailed out of. He said the LAPD officer that showed up afterwards after the crash explained to him that there was quote, not much we could do because the Tesla driver only caused property damage. That was it. They left that dude hanging. They're like, there's nothing we can do for you. He only caused property damage and we're not going to look into it. That was straight up what the LAPD told him by Sunday. When the uh, when the uh, the the video had gone viral, and now there was literally millions of people paying attention to that incident, and Hook is on news channel saying the LAPD straight up told me there's nothing they could do because it was property damage only. Well, fascinating. The police called him back and said, in fact, that they were. Um, in their investigation and that they were going to quote get the guy um and this is this is how hook worded it i love this at first police said they couldn't do much but now it's completely turned around i guess that's thanks to the power of community talking about all this the police literally told him to go kick rocks until there was literally coast to coast media coverage about the incident. And this dude on national TV saying the LAPD told me there's nothing they can do about it. And all of a sudden the police are calling him saying, homie, we got your back. We're looking into it. We're going to find this guy. We're going to take care of it. We're going to make sure that we catch him. Funny how that works. Cause I could have sworn there was only property damage and there was nothing they could do about it two days earlier. The cops are only there to protect the system. Um, Theo, oh my God, wow, the propaganda. They make the same salary in the U.S. as Denmark. U.S. makes more because we pay more taxes. Um, 
fucking beast. <laughs> Call your insurance and don't bug us again. Uh, for people who are only responsible for the protection of property, they sure don't want to do that. Not rich enough to matter. Exactly, Cupcake. Yeah, until, until their feet were being held to the fire and they were being made to look like fools on national TV, now... Now they can now they can get in on this one. Now they can do something about it. Funny how that works. It's just it's fascinating. Hmm. Guess they must have found the manpower. Uh yes, I, I do agree. The police unions should go away, Theo. Um but yes, this is this is one of those situations where like outsiders looking in think that there's these series of problems, but in fact it's it's another series of problems. Um Theo, um, look for, um, I'll, I'll try and tag, you know what, Theo, just say something in the commons in Discord so I have your username up near the top, and I will send you the link to the origins of and problems with modern policing uh, video once I get it live. I had no idea I hadn't, hadn't made it live yet because I hadn't inserted the end card. I will do that later tonight in my workflow. And I will get you that video. It's, I don't know how long it is, but you should watch it. As like an outsider looking in, it's, uh, it's like 20 minutes. It's like 20 minutes. But as an outsider looking in, you need to know some like major points in the development of U.S. policing. Um, and it will help you sort of understand this shit. Um, cool. Uh, I'm going to just, I'm just going to DM you. I'm just DMing you so I have you at the top of my list. There we go. Thank you. I'll get you that. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I left all my Twitch discords, went too far down the rabbit hole, had combos with Chinese tankies, and I had to leave everything. Yeah, homie. That's, dude, tankies. Tankies. Um, welcome home, though. Welcome home. <laughs> My father's a retired state police veteran. I think how police are trained and monitored need a serious upgrade. Way too many tyrant cops. There's a lot of problems. There's a lot of problems, and I'm not going to go through the, the the origins of and problems with. Again, I've done the, the run too many times at this point, but there's way too many problems. Um, so on to... Uh, <laughs> uh, so... I, I, I love this. This is, this is just a great story. Um, hold on. So, <clears throat> oh no, I have to do this one first. All right. So let's hop the pond. Let's hop the pond. Um, and let's go talk to the Met again. Oh, the Met. The Metropolitan Police Force of London is problematic, right? Remember last time we got to talk about how, um, they raped a young girl that because she was black and the teachers called the cops on her, the fucking, they, they suspected she had weed on her. So they strip searched her and fucking, right? Like, okay. So yeah. Right. So the last time we talked about the Met, they were raping a fucking like, I don't know, 12 or 14 year old girl. So this time it's not quite as bad, but historical scale, grand scheme, right? Not great. Not fucking great. Um, so, like, <sighs> DC, Detective Constable, uh, uh, Constable, sorry, um, Detective Constable Joseph Gilligan. So, Metropolitan Police Force Officer. Um, I will read you the direct quote as to what he has been accused of, shall we say? vehemently pursued inappropriate sexual relationship with a vulnerable victim of domestic abuse that he met through the investigation of uh, into her case in which he abused his power by misusing his police computer system to gather further information on the woman and her partner and sharing sensitive images of the sexual assault victim in case files of her sexual assault 
and accessed her mobile, a mobile phone using those police powers that GCHQ so wonderfully has ensured that the British, uh, British uh, state can use to read her private messages and tamper with photographs. <clears throat> Around this same time, D.C. Joseph Gilligan was also, quote, misusing alcohol. He's a drunk. He's a drunk. He was misusing alcohol. I love the British turns of phrase, right? He was misusing alcohol. He's a fucking drunk, right? He was a drunk who crashed his personal car in the police station car park. And then claimed he suffered a diabetic episode, even though evidence he blew, he blew drunk, demonstrated he was over the drink drive limit, and then failed to report the collision when it happened. Um, for his own pleasure, he filmed himself reading aloud private text messages the woman had sent to a work colleague and then sent this recording to a third-party individual. He also forwarded her emails concerning her from his work account to his personal account. <clears throat> Over the course of the investigation into this lovely example of the individuals that make it all the way into the police forces, right. he passed the screenings. He was on the police force. This motherfucker was a cop. All right? This isn't some rookie. This isn't somebody fresh out of the academy. This motherfucker is a cop. This is the behavior of a cop. All right. So during the investigation, over the course of the investigation into D.C. Gilligan, his phone, emails and his police intelligence platform connections were seized and or analyzed. Testing too high disqualifies. Carpe is right. Um, so. <clears throat> Anybody want to guess? Anybody want to guess? In February of 2021, he was allowed to retire from the Met. They let him retire. Now, on to Kai's favorite part. <clears throat> this is my favorite part. It is. It's, it's always the apology. The apology is my favorite part. Chief Sewer Superintendent Sarah Leach. Oh, it's a woman. I wonder if she's of color. This makes everything okay. They, this Chief Superintendent is a woman, so everything's okay now. Chief Superintendent Sarah Leach, who is in charge of policing for the Northwest Area Basic Command Unit, said... Quote, <clears throat> former D.C. Gilligan's behavior was completely unacceptable, and I'm pleased that he's no longer a serving officer. People like him are not welcome in our Met. His actions fell far below the rigorous values and standards that we strive to uphold. Officers should be doing everything in their power to protect victims. They should not be abusing their position of trust and power to form relationships with them. The trust of the public is fundamental to our core purpose of keeping London safe. Our communities deserve the best of their police officers, and this kind of behavior has no place at all in the Met. We only want the best, and I hope this demonstrates that we will always act when our employees fall below the exemplary standards we and the public expect. Our professional standards team will continue to root out wrongdoing and hold those responsible to account. You know, like they did in this case, when they let the dude retire. That's her idea of holding them accountable, is giving them a pension. I sure like that. I sure like that accountability. 
I'd like to be held accountable too by the police. It seems like that, that's this. I would love some police accountability. seems like you get like a $225,000 pension or some shit. Lifetime health care. It's great. Police accountability seems amazing. We should all get some police accountability. Staying on this side of the pond. This is my favorite one for the week. And we will, we will wrap up on another story. We will actually end up in Denver to end the Popo's Bizarre Adventures for today. But this is, um, this is the sort of conclusion of the primary arc, shall we say. Dagenham, Essex. Oh, see? Dagenham. Dagenham, Essex. This is, this is, this is great. So this guy by the name of Eric Taylor. Now, let me, um, hold on. Let me get you, let me get you a picture of Eric. Okay. This is, this is, this is the picture that was being used. This is the picture that was being used. This is not, I have not, this is the picture that was being used. All right. Here is Eric Taylor. Remember, Dagenham Essex. So this is our, um, this is the individual we will be, our story centers around. This is Mr. Taylor. Um, you may or may not notice uh, some outstanding features. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what may or may not pop out of this picture at you, but I just wanted to, I needed you to see Mr. Taylor first so that you may um, maybe understand some context for this story. <laughs> so, in the uh, original incident, don't you love it when, when I say something like that? In the original incident, <clears throat> Mr. Taylor was traveling to work after spending some time shopping. Um, he, on, he unfortunately was lay, waylaid by the police who decided to stop and search him because, quote, he was not dressed for the climate. The incident was recorded and posted to TikTok. We won't be watching the video. It's, it's a thing. But the officers in the video were giggling like kids. Um, and they were making Mr. Taylor feel very um, infantile. They were infantilizing um, Mr. Taylor and they were talking down to him and they were treating him poorly. And their entire reason for their stop and search was founded upon the fact that Mr. Taylor was wearing a jacket. That is their cause. That was the police's just cause. He was wearing a jacket. Uh, Eric Taylor would dared walk down the street in Essex in the UK in March. So the police felt that he was suspicious because he was wearing a jacket. So those of us who were keeping track of the <clears throat> while black list, standing in a parking lot while black, drinking iced tea while black, driving while black, Walking while black, attending school, school while black, um, and uh, just off the top of my head now, wearing a jacket while, while black. The, the things that you cannot do without police harassment or execution in the case of the, well, not execution, but paralyzation, four shots and paralyzed from uh, the chest down uh, in the case of that, uh, that individual uh, for drinking iced tea. The things that you cannot do while black is um, being black while black. Exactly. Boom. Yes. The, the, the list is ever growing. And so for our original incident, you can add while wearing a jacket. <clears throat> so he um, pointed out that during this little, shall we say, inter uh, 
this little tete-a-tete with the um, <laughs> with the officers um, that there were plenty of kids walking by them wearing coats and jackets. But he also pointed out that those children were white. Um, he is very aware that the reason he got searched was because he was black. There was plenty of people in the surrounding area walking around in jackets and coats. It is Mr. Taylor who was singled out for wearing a jacket while black. So <clears throat> the neighbors attempted to intervene. The neighbors came out and even asked, like, literally, why are you doing this? It's not fair. Like, there's even a, a neighbor, a white neighbor who came out and said, is it because he's black? Look at this guy wearing a jacket. You're not stopping them. Right? Like, everybody knew what was going on. Now, the statement from the Metropolitan Police Force, always, always great. I always love the statement. I will never stop saying that. It's my favorite part of these is to hear the statement from these assholes because it's always just hollow words. And I love hearing that. I couldn't imagine the soul deadening process of writing these like press releases for these assholes. It's got to kill you. It's got to kill you inside. Quote, the man was wearing several layers of clothing despite the warm weather and that he became hostile and refused to account for what he was doing after being approached by officers from the Violent Crime Task Force. <clears throat> hey, nonsense. Thanks for the raid. It looks like that's popping correctly now. I got that fixed as well. Um, so... The second incident. How did your stream go nonsense? The second incident, this very same um, Eric Taylor, has video evidence after this of him being cornered by three law enforcement vehicles just this Monday, March 28th at 10, 15 p.m. local time when he was traveling to work from a restaurant. Literally, they've begun to harass him. He is of the mind and of the position now that he says, quote, I am scared to go out. I'm considering cutting my hair or changing my looks to in, or in order to be able to leave the house so the police do not suspect me of criminal activity uh, and do not search me. Quote, I am scared to go out. Now I feel like cutting my hair or changing my looks when I'm going out. It's crazy. I don't even know how it happened to me again just right now. Again, I'm scared now. I don't know. Quote, yesterday, the whole night, I was shaking the whole time. Um, so again, it, driving while black, the same guy who got harangued by the cops for wearing a coat while black got tagged literally a few days later for driving while black. Um, hi, Mito. Duly noted. Sleepy got one follower. He's telling me about a very truthful documentary. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, and so let's let's wrap this up, right? We've been go we've been going for a minute. We've been going for a minute. This isn't as long as the second edition. Um, and the second the the second edition of Popo's Bizarre Adventures will go live as soon as I have the thumbnail thumb, 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 thumbnail ready. The artist is is has my revisions and she is finishing it up. So as soon as we have the thumbnails, I will upload the second and then this third edition of Popo's Bizarre Adventures. If y'all want to keep track, and I'm putting the news article links in these so you have them if you want to reference them. So let us refer, uh, let us wrap this up in Denver. Um, this actually is a uh, uh, fucking, this is decent. This is decent. Um, so Denver Support Team Assisted Response Program. Okay. That's, that's what we are talking about. Since June of 2020, Denver has been using mental health clinicians and paramedics that work separately from the police, that work with the STAR program. 
they uh, w- they respond to 911 calls instead of police officers. Psychotic breaks, people screaming for no apparent reason. A woman experiencing homelessness who couldn't find a place to a place to change, so she undressed in an alleyway. Suicidal people, schizophrenic people, people ODing or people on drugs in various states of mental uh, mental uh, effect. Right, people who just need water and socks. B- connecting people to shelters and food and resources. It is so wildly successful that the city council has approved just last week a $1.4 million contract for an expansion of the STAR program. They, um, they have been, they started with a single van and a two person team more than 2,700 calls later, they are expanding to six vans and more than a dozen workers. And the, the, the uh, start, the program leader hopes that they'll be able to answer 10,000 calls a year at that level. That is 10,000 calls that the godforsaken police will not be responding to. That's 10,000 people that are in the midst of a mental, a mental illness crisis or a, dr- a psychotic drug break or homeless uh, or having homeless issues that just need resource access or that are just generally having a hard time in society that do not need fucking gun-toting psychopath motherfucker wannabe Wild West John Wayne types rolling up on the the city council voted unanimously it is so fucking popular it the mental health center of denver was on board the mental health center of denver was like yes more of this please this is working right they were on board for the program's continuation and expansion right the um also they're getting a contract they're getting a contract, so they can't just be fucked with, right? The contract means the program um, is going to, se- it literally is codified that they will send unarmed health experts instead of police officers to certain emergency calls and will have broader reach and more operational hours. They're expanding it to more time in the day. They're expanding it to more regions of the city. They're expanding it to more, more, more. They're expanding, Right. So they started with $208,141 in grant money to launch a six-month pilot program, and now they have $3.9 million in the 2022 budget allotted for the the following year. It is, um, here are the numbers. It's minimizing unnecessary arrests and unnecessary costs, whether that be jail costs or emergency room costs. It has done so for uh, for less than 1% of the calls coming into the city that it might be eligible for. It matters that we're scaling up. They have, they have, they have managed to do all of this good on such a small scale, on such a small scale. And they need, um, so They've only been am- able to answer 2,700 calls, right? This is the star operation manager, Carly Salen. Um, they've only been able to respond to 2,700 calls, but they could have, they needed to in that same time respond to approximately 11,000 calls. That's the project manager's estimate for what the, the need was. In the same window that we answered 2,700 calls, we should have answered 11,000. That's our goal to hit the need, Right. In all of those calls, in all of those calls, they haven't had to call Denver police back up once. Not once. 2,700 calls to emergency calls with people experiencing psychotic breaks and everything. Not one time did they call the police for backup. They handled everything. They handle everything. They were fine. They were fine. The police were never needed. So that's 11,000 calls that we can point to that the police just aren't needed. They're literally not needed there. They, they serve zero function other than they end up killing people. They end up killing autistic kids. They end up ki- killing caregivers. They end up killing old people. They end up killing like young people. They end up killing everybody. Like that's what they do. And we are starting to get hard data out of Denver, 
showing that in fact you can replace the police in a whole yeah pets pets so many pets so many pets so many pets um you can replace the police in a significant chunk of your emergency calls and it is a net neg it is a net positive to everybody everybody except the police budget except the police budget so So you're saying not agitating the guy undergoing a psychotic break is less dangerous, <laughs> right, Caboose? Um, as you're saying, uh, B said, yep, reminds me of cahoots in Oregon. Been around for decades and it just works, but no one talks about them. Um, we'll have to look into it one of these days. So between June 2020 and January 2022, they have demographical data for 759 people that they served. Two-thirds of the people they helped were experiencing homelessness, Nearly three quarters of those people had diagnoses of bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, schizoaffective disorder, anxiety, or major depression. Two thirds of those contacted were men. Most of the people were between the ages of 31 and 60. About 42% of the people served were white. It's Colorado after all. 22 were black. 22% uh, were black. 7% were Latino. And 11% were identified as multiracial. Most of the star calls come through Denver 911, where dispatchers are now trained to send the star van for appropriate needs instead of police. But about a third of the calls are uh, from Denver police officers who responded to a call and determined that it would be better handled by star. So they've got the police on board. Quote, Salen, Salen, the program manager, quote, officers consistently ask when there are going to be more star vans. The police are on board with this in Denver. They've got the police on board. Although the pro program began under the umbrella of the Denver Department of Public Safety, in January, it was moved. It is now officially under the Department of Public Health and Environment. It's now no longer part of the COP umbrella. The, the COP ar architecture, the COP hierarchy is no longer involved in the STAR program whatsoever. It is now being overseen by the health professionals, which is what it should be, Right? So, <sighs> community-centered leadership, community-centered programs, right? This is what we are about. This is the sort of shit. All of that shit we just talked about, all of that Popo's Bizarre Adventures, all of that, I want that buttressed by this. This is the alternative. When people say, well, what are you going to do without the police? What are you going to do when some crazy guy's on drugs and ranting on the street corner with a knife? What are you going to do? You call the STAR program. You call the STAR program. 2,700 calls. Psychotic breaks. Mental illness. Drug-induced psychosis. Homelessness. Doesn't matter. 2,700 calls. They've never had to call the cops for backup. Not once. Not once. That's the answer. Right there. Community. Community policing. Community health care. Community. Right? If you want these things, it needs to be run and organized by the community. <laughs> yes, Wither. <laughs> Permission granted. Um, yes. Like, this is what it's about. This is results. This is tangible fucking results, and it's, it's not being killed. Denver is embracing it. They see the success. They see the value. They're shifting. And if you can get those calls uh, away from the police, then all the better for everyone involved. This is, this is better for everyone. Community-centered programs, dual power structures, right? Right? I'm a little bothered by the fact that it's run by the Department of, uh, you know, he uh, Public Health and Environment. I'm happy that it's with the fucking health professionals, right? I'm, I'm happy it's with the health professionals. I would much prefer if this program were answerable to a civilian community run dual power structure committee. That, that is a problem. I, I worry about that. 
that this program can be co-opted and corrupted from the inside based on governmental hierarchy and that sort of thing. Um, but it's a step in the correct direction and I wouldn't dare, dare shit on it. I, 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 this is, this is unlike the Amazon fucking thing that like, you know, I'm like, guys, it's just not what you want it to be. This is what we want it to be. This is, this is a step in the right direction. This is getting the police out of interacting with the public. This is getting the police out of mental health spaces. This is getting the police out of homelessness spaces. This is getting the police out of, you know what? Anytime we can get the police to not interact with individuals at all, all the better. If we can reduce them to nothing more than desk duty, we have won. Right. If we can get this cops out of the fucking streets the same way that like nobody sees the fucking fire department patrolling for fire. Right. Sit down and shut the fuck up. And when we need you, we'll call you. If we can relegate the police to literally a role of like firemen in our society, then we can relegate the police to antiquity. If we can get them in that position, if we can get them where they're they're not supposed to be coming out for, without reason right that's a position that we can actually work with now we can just eliminate them you want to get you want to abolish the police this is actually a step in the right direction like i said being part of the public de- uh, de- uh, the department of public health and environment not the optimal solution but this gives us talking points this gives us arguments this gives us numbers and facts to back up our point that the cops are fucking killing people and that this is a solution so this gives us a position to work off of so it's valuable in that way especially uh, so yeah that's that's how I wanted to end Popo's Bizarre Adventures.